डॉक्टर शैलेश नाईक दि ऑनरेबल चान्सलर डेरी स्कूल ऑफ एडवान्स स्टडीज प्रोफेसर मणिपद्म दत्ता ऑनरेबल वाईस चान्सलर डिस्टिंग्विश मेंबर्स ऑफ द बोर्ड ऑफ मॅनेजमेंट ट्रस्टीज डीन्स रजिस्ट्रार डिस्टिंग्विश गेस्ट प्राऊड ग्रॅज्युएट्स ऑफ द डे दे आर इक्वली प्राऊड पेरेंट्स अँड फ्रेंड्स लेडीज अँड जंटलमॅन इट्स अ ग्रेट ऑनर अँड अ प्रिव्हिलेज टू डिलिव्हर द थर्टीन कॉन्वोकेशन ॲड्रेस ऑफ टेरी स्कूल ऑफ ॲडव्हान्स स्टडीज इट्स मदर इन्स्टिट्यूशन द एनर्जी रिसर्च इन्स्टिट्यूट टेरी ॲड डिस्टिंग्विश इट सेल्फ ग्लोबली थ्रू इट्स पार ब्रेकिंग कंट्रीब्युशन्स आय एम ॲब्सुलुटली डिलाइटेड टू सी दॅट टेरी स्कूल ऑफ ॲडव्हान्स स्टडीज इज क्रिएटिंग इट्स ओन डिस्टिंगटिव्ह इम्प्रिंट इन द एरे ऑफ सस्टेनेबल डेव्हलपमेंट नॉट ओनली नॅशनली बट ग्लोबली आय वॉन्ट टू बिगिन बाय कंग्रॅच्युलेटिंग द पेरेंट्स फर्स्ट एज्युकेशन इज द बेस्ट गिफ्ट दॅट यू कुड हॅव गिवन टू युअर चिल्ड्रन आय वॉन्ट टू देन कंग्रॅच्युलेट द ग्रॅज्युएट्स ऑफ द डे वेन अवर जनरेशन ग्रॅज्युएटेड India was a third world country when you are graduating india is well on its way to become the third most powerful country in the world and my young friends it is you who will be charged with building this great future of our great nation they say that institutions can't be the future of the young but they can build the young for the future you are fortunate that your great alma mater has equipped you fully with skills and tools to deal with this challenge most importantly that of sustainable development most confidently i want to thank the honorable chancellor dr shailesh nayak whom i admire as a great scientist and a great visionary science leader for inviting me to deliver this prestigious address further i am most grateful to you sir for honoring me with honorary doctorate this happens to be my 43rd honorary doctorate but this is the first one that i have received virtually this is always the first time as they say also it is most precious for me as it is given by such a wonderful institution with such warmth and such affection really really grateful to you we are meeting virtually in the midst of this coronavirus pandemic there has been an unprecedented destruction of lives and livelihoods the whole world now is in a reset mode even we in india are trying to reset and recover there is an opportunity in this adversity of rethinking reimagining the new india of our dreams so that we achieve not only recovery but green recovery not just growth but accelerated green growth how to achieve that is the theme of my short convocation address today we have of course experience pandemics before the human race be it yellow fever be it sars ebola swine flu or even the current coronavirus coronavirus pandemic through which we are going through both pandemics and climate risks lead to a range of devastating socio economic impacts there is a striking similarity you know between the shocks and after effects of pandemics and climate risks first the knockdown or knock on effect of pandemics propagate fast across a hugely interconnected world today second their socio economic impact grows disproportionately and even catastrophically once certain thresholds are reached like hospitals falling short of icus third they are uh, they exasperate the vulnerabilities in the system which always existed but never tested as our honorable 
Chancellor rightly pointed out the vulnerabilities of public health care systems. As he again pointed out, that of extreme inequalities is a case in point. In India, we witnessed the impact of these when we saw millions of poor migrant workers walking kilometers to their villages or when our public health infrastructure got overwhelmed due to shortage of ventilators, ICUs, beds, and so on. Fourth, they affect disproportionately the most vulnerable populations of the world. Look at, for example, the present pandemic. You know, <clears throat> in just 100 days, nearly 100 days, over 100 million families plummeted from poverty to extreme poverty. In nearly 100 days, 450 million jobs were lost. In just 100 days, 1.6 billion children were thrown out of school and with one third of them suffering from digital deprivation, having no access to online learning and therefore no access to education. The current coronavirus pandemic is possibly to my mind a trailer of what a full-fledged climate crisis could mean in terms of simultaneous exogenous shocks, both on the supply side as well as the demand side. How huge disruption of supply chains would take place, as they have taken place now, and how the amazing play of global transmission and amplification mechanisms will be on display as they have now. So this is a warning signal for humanity, for all of us. This trailer also has a lesson for us that the cost of a global crisis of this dimension is bound to vastly exceed those of its prevention. So we must do everything possible to prevent it. The question is, can we? And the answer is yes. I say this because mercifully, the drivers of such a prevention are emerging. Among them, the foremost is the indomitable human spirit that fought all the previous pandemics and one in each case, it is going to win in this case also. Then I will put emerging three Ds at the top of the list. What are those? Digitalization, decentralization, and decarbonization. And again, if these three Ds are backed up by bold policy measures, we could not only reimagine, but reinvent a new India of our dreams. Let me explain each of these three Ds to you. The first D is digitalization. Our visionary Prime Minister's dream of digital India is taking great shape. For example, it took India 25 years for 2G broadband cellular network technology to come in. But India moved to 4G in just three years, thanks to the audacity of Jio, and the same audacity uh, helped India to jump from 155th position in mobile data consumption to the first position in just a matter of few months. Look at telehealth. It is rapidly catching up. 50 million Indians access healthcare online from just these two months, March to May 2020, with 80% of all telemedicine users and patients using it for the first time ever. Look at mobile payments. India jumped to number one position from nowhere during the last month. So we are making rapid progress. We are making exponential progress in the field, I mean, towards the goal of digitalization. That's the first D. The second D is decentralization. In every endeavor, be it energy, water, health, manufacturing, services, and you name it, development of technologies leading to decentralization is on cards. Working from home, telemedicine, digital financial transactions are gathering pace, and all of them mean decentralization, and that is going to lead to decarbonization. Take health as an example. Rather than having centralized medical testing facilities where everybody has to travel, creation of decentralized point of care non-invasive user-friendly testing technology is leading to decentralization. 
internet of things connected devices they have uh, uh, been helping to fight covid 19 and to share data with their doctors from their homes let me give you an example you know in my mother's name anjani mashelkar i have created anjani mashelkar inclusive innovation award the keyword is inclusive like you believe our institute believes in inclusive education so inclusive innovation this is the 10th year of the award it went this year to a young startup dozy which created a contact free health monitor based on iot internet of things that can be placed under mattress just slipped in under mattress any bed into a corona continuous health monitoring unit it gets converted and almost like converting normal beds into step down icus and that to at 10% of the cost and it can be done in minutes so this means care at home for high risk patients for home isolation of covid patients and so on this is decentralization hospital at home and this is becoming possible because of digital technology and in your own area of uh, strength and expertise energy as far as energy is concerned decentralized creation and consumption is on the cards shifting decentralized microgrids is already uh, for example happening and there are so many other examples so i talked about two d's digitalization and decentralization the third d is decarbonization which is close to our heart when we talk about climate change and uh, the other challenges we need green growth we all agree but for that we'll need green technologies that will help us become net carbon neutral in coming years and as you have seen enterprises after enterprises nations after nations are announcing the plans to become net carbon neutral renewable energy be it solar or wind or bio based will be the key the focus is shifting to new economies like bio economy based on biofuels technologies hydrogen economy based on hydrogen fuel cell technology and not just hydrogen as gray or blue by the way green hydrogen economy industry is accelerating the process of decarbonizing by prioritizing the retirement of economically marginal carbon intensive assets to the use of shorter supply chains creating higher energy efficiency manufacturing and processing and digital transformation from manufacturing to marketing yes i said digital transformation of manufacturing let me give you just one example 3d printing which is based on additive manufacturing is helping in decentralized manufacturing and doing away with carbon footprint that is created in huge supply chains in normal mass manufacturing they all just get eliminated and that is transformation so in summary i would say that the three d's that i have talked about are completely interdependent digitalization will create decentralization which in turn will create decarbonization and these three d's as i said are transformative but as i said earlier these three d's have to be backed up by a strong policy action policy in fact is the main difference between the current energy transition and past energy transition you know as we move from coal to oil to natural gas etc etc so there is this analysis done by oxford institute of energy studies last year which is very revealing they show that governments have used a variety of policy tools to accelerate decarbonization policies have varied from direct stimulation of the deployment of renewable technology that is feed in tariffs feed in premiums production tax credits investment tax credits green certificates renewable portfolio standards or favor the technology progress of renewable energy like the financial support for creating green technologies and doing r&d for that or create policies aimed at directly reducing carbon emissions like carbon taxes cap and trade systems these are examples what about india i'm very proud to see the way things are moving in india in india we have seen the impact for example of bold policy initiatives let's take just one example there are many but i'll just take one let us uh, take lighting industry which is a consumer of around 15% of the energy we produce 
India launched the world's largest lighting replacement project by setting up this aspirational idea of affordable LEDs for all in our Ujala mission. The policy level innovations were done in terms of demand aggregation, competitive bidding, standardization, and system delivery innovation. Can you see the impact? The market share of LEDs went from 0.3% to 80% in just nine years. Just nine years. The price of nine watt LED bulb plummeted uh, from $7 in 2009 to $1 in 2018. And India did it with speed, by the way. It was thought, oh my God, this is a new technology, it will take a long time. But that technology adoption will take five years is what people thought, but India did it in six months. India achieved scale, for example, 100 million plus LED bulbs were distributed in record time. This led to sustainability by eliminating the release of 3 million tons of carbon dioxide per year. And as you know, more than me, 0.85 tons of carbon dioxide is released per megawatt hours in coal-based power plants. So just multiply 0.85 by uh, uh, 3 million. And you can just see the huge impact uh, on sustenance. So this is all policy rate. So my friends, my message was India can do it, India has done it, and India will do it. So here is a brilliant example of what magic India can do with speed, scale, and sustainability by riding on the wave of 3Ds with a 4D added, very important, and that being the determined action, backed up by bold policy and immaculate execution, as we have done. At the end, I'll just take five more minutes. At the end, my young friends, you tell me, you are 77. You are playing the fourth inning of your life. But we are just beginning the first inning. So what are the lessons that you can give us from the book of your life of your 77 years. So let me give you the distilled wisdom. I'll give you five Vashelkar mantras, which have helped me in my life. I hope they will help you too. First, the beginning of your life is not in your hands, but where you end up is very much in your hands. You can't predict your future when you are beginning journey, obviously to whom you are born, where you are born, uh, under what conditions you are born but you can look at your destiny, which is in your hands. When I was studying Newton's laws of motion in college, I did not realize that less than four decades later, I will sign in the same book as Newton did while getting inducted as a fellow of Royal Society. As you know, that is considered uh, one of the most prestigious after Nobel Prize. And this was done in a ceremonial process uh, in London. As a poor boy, the only son of a struggling poor widowed mother, I was going to leave studies. I could survive and study only because of a Tata scholarship of 60 rupees per month that I had for six years. I would not have imagined that the head of the house of Tata's, Ratan Tata, and I will receive Padma Bhushan Award in the same ceremony, one after the other, in Rashtrapati Bhavan on 17 March 2000, and that too at the hands of late President R.K. Narayanan, who could also continue his studies due to a Tata scholarship, just like me. Can you just imagine? That's what I said. Uh, President R.K. Narayanan was born very, very poor. I was born very, very poor. But where did one end up? So the first Mahasilkan Mantra is your aspirations are your possibilities. Believe in yourself and keep them high. The second Marshall Karman, there is no substitute to hard work for becoming successful. Like instant coffee, there is no instant success. I myself work 24 into 7, although I am 77. Week after week, month after month, year after year, and we do so till I take my last breath. The golden rule is the following. Work hard in silence. Let success make all the noise. My third mantra, perseverance matters. Always too early to quit. Quitters are never winners. Winners are never quitters. Interpret fail, F-A-I-L, as first attempt in learning. Your best guru is your last mistake as long as you learn from it. The fourth 
ಮಾಡ್ಕೊಂಡು ನಾವು ಶಿಲ್ಕರ್ ಮಂತ್ರ ಬಿ ಆಲ್ವೇಸ್ ಅ ಪಾರ್ಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಅ ಸೊಲ್ಯೂಷನ್ ನೆವರ್ ಬಿ ಅ ಪಾರ್ಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಅ ಪ್ರಾಬ್ಲಮ್ ಇಫ್ ಯು ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಫೈನ್ ದ ವೇ ಕ್ರಿಯೇಟ್ ಯುವರ್ ಓನ್ ನ್ಯೂ ವೇ ಯು ವಿಲ್ ಕೀಪ್ ಆನ್ ನಾಕಿಂಗ್ ಆನ್ ದ ಡೋರ್ಸ್ ಡೋಂಟ್ ಗೆಟ್ ಫ್ರಸ್ಟ್ರೇಟೆಡ್ ಇಫ್ ದೇ ಡೋಂಟ್ ಓಪನ್ ಕ್ರಿಯೇಟ್ ಯುವರ್ ಓನ್ ಡೋರ್ಸ್ ಐ ರಿಮೆಂಬರ್ ವೆನ್ ಐ ಕೇಮ್ ಬ್ಯಾಕ್ ಇನ್ ನೈನ್ಟೀನ್ ಸೆವೆಂಟಿ ಸಿಕ್ಸ್ to establish a school of rheology and non newtonian fluid mechanics the uh, challenge was that i'll get that equipment after 2 years so that door was not opening i created my own door i shifted fields and i went into modeling and simulation and i'm very proud to say that within 5 years 77 to 82 i got the ss batnagar prize which is considered as one of the highest honors for less than 40 years. but supposing i just sat like that and wait for the door to open it would not happen so that's why i'm saying create your own and my final mantra the fifth mantra did no limit to human endurance no limit to human achievement and no limit to human imagination accepting the limits you put on your mind yourself i'll just give an example you know when i became fellow of royal society i had told you the importance of this i uh, remember i called my uh, uh, guru uh, his guru for your chancellor also his uh, mahaguru for all of us bharat ratna professor sena rao and i told him sir i have become frs you know what was his response not bad i was disappointed then i became fellow of american academy of arts and science after 1780 only seven indians have become you know and the list includes charles darwin winston churchill 200 nobel laureates of uh, etc etc so i was very proud and i called him he said again not bad so i was very uh, disappointed then i became us national secretary of uh, inventors and not seventh or third etc i was the first so i thought now he will say great i called him he said again not bad then i got frustrated i said sir what do i have to do to impress you what he told me that is the message i will leave for you he said mashelkar you are climbing on a ladder of excellence that has no limit accepting the limits you put on yourself so my suggestion to you is that you will have to say always no matter what you achieve your best is yet to come you are in your 20s you will be 30 40 50 60 you will live for 100 years even when you are 89 let us say that day in the morning you should say my best is yet to come and maybe today is the day and if we do all indians do this india will find its rightful place in the committee of nations my young friends finally all my best wishes and choices blessings will be always with you when you keep on climbing on this limitless ladder of excellence and bring glory not only to yourself to your family to the society but to our beloved nation our glorious motherland thank you very much